I feel like as a kid, I just kind of went by a girl because everybody was calling me a girl. So I was like, I guess I'm a girl. I don't understand what a woman is necessarily. And the same goes for men. I don't understand what it is to be a man. I don't relate to it. I don't desire to look like a man. I don't desire to look like a woman. The things that I do, I don't do it in the name of gender. I just exist. I am a biracial, black and white, non-binary, queer, fat orphan. I'm Richie Shazam, artist, model, and fashion photographer. And I'm Lucas Silvera. I'm a musician and life and relationship coach. Growing up gender non-conforming doesn't come without confusion, especially when it comes to your external presentation. We've both been through it. So now we're on the road helping other folks in their quest to discover where their true expression lies. Not only on the gender spectrum, but on the style spectrum as well. I'm Prism C. Mist Zephyr. My pronouns are they, them. <laughs> it means a lot to me to put in every single identity because it kind of like paves my path in this world. Hi. <laughs> Welcome. I go through this world thinking about how I'm being perceived all the time. Why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are? I just don't understand the concept of being a man or a woman. And I don't understand how my body necessarily speaks to one or the other. I'm fat. I'm a biracial black and white person. I'm also an orphan. And it's just another way in which I'm an alien to the world around me. Especially when I was a child, nobody could ever relate to that concept. They couldn't even imagine not having their mom in the morning to like make them breakfast. When I was 10 years old, my mom had a blood clot and they gave her the wrong dosage. The combination of both ended up killing her. I lost my dad when I was 13 years old and when I was orphaned completely, I moved out to Sandy Valley with my grandpa. I feel like it taught me to raise myself and have more adult qualities at a younger age and yeah. be more responsible because there is nobody around to really teach me that stuff. I, I too, you know, losing my mom, feeling like I had to grow up so quickly and sort of be this adult and have to like take care and nurture myself, right. sort of against all the odds, you know? Mm -hmm. It was so difficult, but I built my chosen family, the people that uplift me and really want to hear my voice, not silence it. So you've brought up the word and, you know, identity of being fat. What does that mean to you? Going through my life as a fat person, I've always been fat. I never chose to be fat, and yet people always see it as a choice. I just remember having this epiphany one time when I was like a kid, started understanding why people were being mean to me. Like, oh, I'm the fat kid. By identifying it and reclaiming it, I'm using it in a positive connotation, or at least a neutral connotation. For me, the biggest thing that I need to do first is um, kind of lower the levels and internalize fat phobia within myself. I get dysphoria thinking about my body and that is it too fat constantly and how I'm holding myself. And so just the idea of being perceived can cause me to dissociate. I think that fat activism is so important, not just for fat people, but for everybody. So I really want to know, Prism, like what's your ultimate fantasy? What is it that we can help you with? It would be to actually be perceived as non-binary and hopefully finding a place um, within myself where I can finally be comfortable like expressing myself totally. Misgendering is a constant for me. And so I would love it if I could just go one day going to any public place and not be misgendered at all. I'm just trying to live day by day and we need to stop making it hard for me to do so. I know we're attending your incredible name change party. Tell us about the power of your name, Prism. I really just love the imagery of it. I just love the concept of <laughs> taking white light and turning it into a rainbow. <laughs> yeah. It was important for me to change my name because I knew I was gonna go buy it for the rest of my life. And I didn't want to keep having that weird conversation of like, oh, why does it say this on your driver's license, but you call yourself Prism? 
How do you want to present at this party? I would like to have something, an outfit that is as surprising as the fact that I've changed my name. I want to be just more queer looking and more open, so I want to see how I can have like big, bold shapes and colors. I want to stop dressing for others and start dressing for myself. Period. So my friends can look at me and say, oh yeah, that's the prism that I see, that I see for myself as well when I look in the mirror. Prism identifies as biracial, black and white, and fat. And it's important for them to be able to speak to someone who shares that intersection with them. So we've brought in someone who is perfect for the job. We flew in this beautiful human being. You really are from a, super beautiful. Right? <laughs> from Atlanta, Georgia. Wow. This is Hunter Shackelford. And I think that they have a plethora of information and experience they can offer you that I probably could not. So I'm a fat activist, um, a non-binary shapeshifter, a cyborg, if you will. <laughs> so tell me, what are some of the things that you're currently like navigating in terms of like struggling with? Right now, I'm having um, trouble having fat body positivity within myself. I've gone a lot through shaming myself for being fat. Guess what? It doesn't do anything but make you feel bad. What are some of the things that come up for you, like that you feel like your fatness cannot exist in this world? I feel like I especially kind of look like a, a clown or a zoo that everybody likes to just kind of point at and laugh. You know, if I walk into a classroom and the desk is too small, I feel like everybody's paying attention to that. People don't believe that there would be dysphoria for being fat when there actually is, especially when constantly people are talking about the way that your body looks. It's such a derivative of how anti-blackness works to, to really like to center you in everyone's world where everyone's saying like they don't want to be you. I think for most of my life I was bullied for being fat and it was really its own hell where all these people are just like, wow, why would you wear that? Or taking pictures of me while I'm eating. It was super hurtful. These things are very violent. There was a point for me in high school when I realized that it was really gonna be me versus the world. I was gonna be fat unapologetically, and if people hated me, then that's your problem. For me, I found my way through that by finding other people who were like me. I exist in primarily white and thin spaces, and people don't wanna see fat as an issue. People wanna see as like a problem to blame me for, and so it's really hard to find people that wanna take it seriously and see that there's systematic issues behind it. Sometimes you just want people to, to really just support you, like to just really be your role dogs, where it's just like, yo, I just need someone who gonna yell at the people with me or just catch it before I do and then protect me from it. How do you make yourself have more positive thoughts towards your body when you're looking at it directly or looking at it in a mirror? I love to say that I am valuable. When the I hate myself monster comes over and it's like, wow, you really ugly. Like, what's up? Like, that's really what it be feeling like. And I'd be like, okay, and I'm ugly, so now what? I will have a conversation with the worst voices in my head and ask the question, why don't I deserve to exist, even if that was true? One of the most valuable places of your journey is to recognize like what spaces that you want to grow in or what mechanisms that you want to apply to your life. Just to say that you have survived this far, right? And so look at you doing your thing. So I just want to say shout out to you because you're doing it. It's not likely to change in a way that society will be satisfied by it. And realizing that really breaks the chains. Being fat also means that people can more easily see my assigned gender at birth, um, specifically with the curves. And you know, my favorite color is pink, and I don't want to keep sacrificing of my favorite color. I want to just wear whatever I want to wear. Yes. Oh, and you deserve that. Thank you. You do too. So we're gonna go on a fashion journey, and we're gonna get you the affirmation that you're looking for, for how you want to present to the world, so that you can tell everybody, I'm here and you control your truth, okay? Now that Prism and Hunter have bonded, Hi. we're all meeting at my studio to help Prism find a gender-affirming outfit to wear to their party. We're gonna try on clothes in a way that feels affirming for you in a safe space that's curated specifically for you in the style that you're looking to embody. I'm pretty excited that it's just gonna be the few of us, like I trust you guys. I feel like I'm going to feel powerful and I will be more confident in myself. 
This is what I'm thinking when I'm thinking like loud. I'm like, hi, I'm here. Hi, what do you want from me? Yes. <laughs> My aspirational queer fashion is a lot of loud colors that definitely come off as like pride colors rather than just, oh, they're lo wearing a lot of pink today. I'm really enjoying this. This is like, who's that queer? Gosh, I'm sorry, this print is so cool. Little friend. Yeah. It's really good. Thank for this printed. I see these things are, and I can like hear noises, and I'm like, we love a sonic entrance as well. Absolutely. <laughs> it's the jingle for yes. me that I like specifically. It's just giving liberation. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Clothing is a performance in the way that other people might see gender as a performance. And so I just want to perform being queer. Everything about these pants I'm living for, just like- There's just a pink like, etching. Exactly. Isn't that, it's really this 90s inspired look, like really comfy, really loud print, and obviously has a lot of our pink fantasy. Both of the pieces were like size to me. It, it, I can't imagine anything better than this, honestly. This is definitely the outfit that I'm wearing tomorrow. Yes. We love to see it. <laughs> wow, who is that? Prism. Prism. <laughs> Prism will be surprising their friends with their official name change certificate at the party tomorrow. But there's one special person who they want to tell first. I was always very curious about why my grandfather was very accepting of trans people. And it turns out he is a trans person. What a interesting way to grow up. What was that like? It was interesting because he didn't actually start presenting like that until after I came out as non-binary to him. It was good to have a person who I knew all along was trans supportive, but I didn't know why he was trans supportive until he came out himself. I think that my rejection of the binary helped my grandpa with his rejection of the binary because I came out before him. I thought he was cis, he thought I was cis. Like by being my true self, he realized like, hey, there is no reason that I can't wear jewelry and makeup and nails. My definition of family is the people that you choose to be in your life. And that could be friends, that could be adopted family, that could be blood family, like I keep my grandpa into my life because he and I already made a friendship. Hi, I'm here with my friend Lucas. Hi, Grandpa. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet Hi. you too. We're just sitting outside my apartment and we had something we wanted to show you. You ready? I got my birth certificate changed and I got my name legally changed. Yeah, right? This is quite a big deal, isn't it? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> it's gigantic. I'm very happy that you are at the moment you want to be. Thank That's you. That's what matters. Yeah, totally. That's beautiful <laughs> to have such a supportive person in their life. They are very strong individuals. <laughs> Thank you. What a pleasure it was to be a parent of, of prison. It was tragic, but yet an honor and a pleasure. Thank you for uh, letting us call you today. I love you and have a good day. You have a great day too, honey. I love you too. How comfortable do you feel being emotionally vulnerable? I do it, but it does cause a lot of anxiety and I live with anxiety pretty much every single day. I always think that I learn my lesson of like, I can't be vulnerable to these people because they're just gonna end up rejecting me anyway. That perspective may hold you as a little bit of a prisoner because unfortunately we can never control what the people around us are going to feel about us, mm. how they're going to treat us. For queer bodies, fat bodies, if it's different from a mainstream ideal of beauty mm. or heteronormativity or cisdom, <laughs> we are taught <laughs> that we're not normal. Right. You're taught that we are not beautiful and that we don't fit a standard. And it's up to us to truly just go, I'm here. If you're not into me, if, you're, if you think I'm this, that, or the other, that's your problem. But I'm still gonna be here. Mm -hmm. And what ends up happening in these situations is that the people who will automatically be attracted to you mm -hmm. and your self-love, mm -hmm. they'll come forward. And the, those other people will fall back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So don't forget to take off the, the armor once in a while because you're transforming people. Mm -hmm. 
you're creating change just by being who you are. I use hair as a tool for expressing my gender a lot. I know that I'm going to receive a lot of attention for what I look like anyway, and that's why I really want to take control of my presentation and say, you're going to look at me and see queer. That's beautiful. <laughs> I love that. I was hoping that we could like dye my hair, dye my eyebrows, give me an eyebrow slit. I would like to see a person that is at least a little bit more free and has taken more control of how to be perceived. I know that I've gone into many salons, barber shops, whatever, and left in tears because I didn't get what I asked for because I was not masculine enough or feminine enough. That sucks mm -hmm. to go somewhere and know that you're not gonna get what you want because of how you look or who you are or somebody else's perception of you. I just exist, once again. <laughs> I'm just existing. I didn't choose to be gay, I didn't choose to be fat, I didn't choose to be black, I'm just existing. And yet, for some reason, it's a political statement because people are against it. You know, that's one of the biggest things here is like, I don't do that. I will do anything that you ask me to do as long as it's not gonna hurt you. Yeah. As long as it's not bad for your hair. Are you excited? Oh yeah, that's pretty good. Bang. Oh, look at how oh, yeah. bright that is. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's gonna be like, what are you doing with your life? And I'm like, this. All right, it's time for the eyeballs. Love it, okay. <laughs> Bigger reactions when we can see. <laughs> I would love to run into any old family friend and just really show them like, no, this is me. <laughs> you can either get with the program or I can continue to ignore you. Like, just like the side is like very enticing. Ooh, it's gonna enticing. Be your eye. <laughs> Moving like a superhero. <laughs>I would like to wear makeup to make a statement, make it clear that I'm not respecting makeup in the way that people want me to wear makeup. I think makeup should be theatrical. You know, the overall idea of makeup is that it, it allows us to like give us that second skin, that armor, that like necessary zhuzh to literally stomp the yard, you know, when we leave our homes, whatever situation that we're in, the makeup will help highlight and illuminate what we're trying to present. We are draining the gender out of makeup. We're rewriting what pink means and represents. This is definitely about not sacrificing anything in order to achieve my gender. Like, I don't have to sacrifice pink in order to yes. be non-binary. Yes. Yeah. We're giving it our own association. We're an art piece. Prism, mm -hmm. you are an art piece. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that is so good. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this really just was like cherry on top of the cake. We've gathered all of Prism's friends to help celebrate their new look and new name. Are you guys ready? Here's Prism! <laughs> It's so nice to be able to have an outfit that I can look at myself in. And instead of allowing the internalized fat phobia to be the only train of thought that I'm having, instead, look at how this is my favorite color. This is such a wonderful shirt. And I love the makeup on my face. And just be happy for the body that is in front of me. I know we're here to celebrate this beautiful outfit, but I have one more surprise for the rest of you, which is I got my name legally changed! Woo! It's on my birth certificate! 
certificate. It's important to me to gather my support system, really, and have them celebrate with me something that they've actually understood and respected and been appreciative that, you know, I changed not only my first name, but my entire name. They understand how much importance it has for me. You look amazing. I'm, I'm blown away. I know, right? And the Everything. I wear this outfit. I definitely think that whoever looks at me will see that this is not cis. <laughs> and definitely think queer. You look so good. <laughs> oh my god. I'm more confident than I was before, and I'm more energetic than I was before, and I'm louder, and I'm taking up more space, and I'm so happy to be here with people I care about. Prism, it's been such an honor to spend this time with you and to be surrounded by all of this love. We got you a special present. No, 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 yes. no, we've already <laughs> added a present. The power of this present is something for us as a token to remember this moment. It's a special little meat plate. <laughs> are you kidding me? You know, our names are very important. They affirm our identities. We love you so much. Lucas and I are so happy that we got to have this moment with you. Oh, thank you so much. Are you kidding me? This is so good and perfect. I'm so happy to be able to share these moments with my friends and Lucas and Richie. This could not have been better, honestly. And it goes perfect with our color. I was gonna say. Yeah, yeah. I'm here. I'm happy. Thank you so much. Thank you. Love you. I love you. I love you. Oh, you guys too. Oh my God. Okay, 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 I'm here. We have been so focused lately on gender dysphoria and how to defeat body dysphoria, including fat dysphoria as well. But today I definitely feel gender euphoria and just being able to exist within my favorite color, within a beautiful outfit that was made for me and be entirely happy.